አደባባይ ሚዲያ ሎገንተኝነት ጀርባውን የሰጠ ጊዜው ይጥቀመን አንብኝ ብሎ የዘመመን ሊያቀና ኡነትን ነው ከተና አስከትሉ ኢኮኖሚያዊና መንፈሳዊ መረጃዎችን እንካቹ ይላል ተኩዚኖች ዘጋቢ ፊልሞች ጥልቅ ትንታኔዎች በአደባባይ ሚዲያ ይቀርባሉ። ራያጭ ጊዜውን ያማከለና ዘመኑ ይዋጭ በእውነት የነጠሩ መረጃዎች በውቀት ደግፎ ለሀገራችን ብሎ ለዓለም ህዝብ ማዳረስ ነው። አድራሻ አደባባይ ኢንፎ ሚዲያ አት ጂሜል ዶት ኮም ዌብሳይታችን www.adababai dot com ያግኙን ይርዱን ዩላችን ስለሆነች ኢትዮጵያ በአደባባይ እንዝክባለን አደባባይ ሚዲያ አደባባይ ሚዲያ የኔ ነው አደባባይ ሚዲያ የኔ ነው አደባባይ ሚዲያ የኔ ነው አደባባይ ሚዲያ የሁላችን ነው የኛ ቤተሰብ አደባባይ ሚዲያን ይመለከታልን አንተስ ዱ ዮር ፔንስ ዋች አደባባይ ሚዲያ ዋች ፋው ሰብስክራይብ እና ሀፕ አደባባይ አደባባይ ሚዲያ ለወገን ተኝነት ጀርባውን ይሰጣል Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us from around the world. This is Adawai Media's Your Digest program. My name is Hiwa Tadesa and I'll be your host for today. Today we have invited philosopher, author, author and professor Masai Kabeda to talk to us about what happened in Addis Ababa University, formerly known as Haile Selassie's University in the 60s and 70s and the the, education, the educational system that caused this. I would like to ask everyone to share and subscribe and um this conversation station and join us and stay with us As I mentioned earlier, my guest for today is Professor Masai Kabeda. Um, after completing his uh, philosophical studies in France, Dr. Masai Kabeda returned to Ethiopia and taught philosophy in Addis Ababa University. And he also served as the chair of the Department of Philosophy from 1980 to 1991. His university career was interrupted when the Ethiopia's government dismissed him with 40 other instructors from Addis Ababa University for political reasons. He is the author of many books and articles such as survival and modernization ethiopia's enigma enigmatic present and philosophical discourse africa's quest for philosophy of decolonization ethiopia's conception of time and modernization the roots and fallacies of haile selassie's educational policy and the topic of our discussion today radicalization and cultural dislocation in ethiopia among many others he is currently a professor at university of dayton in the philosophy department thank you for accepting our invitation professor and um, for joining us welcome um, thank you for inviting me of course um if we just jump in into the conversation i guess most of us when we were growing up we heard about the radicalization radicalization of students in the 60s and the 70s so what are the factors that led to this progressive radic radic <laughs> radicalization of ethiopian students and intellectuals especially in the 60s and 70s yeah uh first i would like again to thank you uh for this interview because uh, uh so far not one single uh, ethiopian has interviewed me uh concerning my books i have been interviewed several times yeah. but it is always about current politics yeah but nobody uh asked me about my book uh, what i wrote about ethiopia uh of course I understand the importance of current issues but uh unless we step back uh, we can't have any serious per perspective on uh the current issues and also what uh, the future could be that is we are trying to imagine in the future and uh, for this uh, uh we need some space uh from the current so again uh, uh i thank you uh 
for focusing this interview on the on my book uh, on radicalization absolutely uh to answer your question uh, uh first of all i would say uh, i mean there is no any single simple answer to this kind of question mm -hmm. uh because uh, several factors in and interact so the best we can do is to see which one they say has more weight uh than the other and this mm -hmm. is what uh, i was trying to do in this book uh and for me uh the most important factor uh, has emerged uh, uh, as the cultural issue uh, in Ethiopia. Now, first, of course, uh, discontent uh, regarding uh, the imperial regime uh, uh, are well documented. Uh, so I had to take into consideration the socio-economic factors, uh, uh, the level of poverty, uh, unemployment, dropout. All these things have been mentioned as uh, uh, element uh, uh, that led to the politicization of European students. Uh, uh, however, very soon I was confronted with a problem, uh, which is that uh, discontent, uh, whatever its intensity is, uh, does not lead to any revolutionary uh, uh, process or uh, need or decision. Uh, in order to put a country upside down, something else must have happened because discontent, of course, uh, I would see could lead to demands for reform. Yeah. But in Ethiopia, a uh, reform, the very idea of reform was actually discarded. Uh, and uh, student, most students believe that there is only one single solution, uh, which is a revolutionary change. Mm -hmm. And by revolution, we mean, therefore, uh, not some adjustment, corrections, uh, adjustment, reforms, but to put the whole country upside down, it's a radical change. Uh, so that I could not uh, be contained with the explanation that socioeconomic uh, conditions uh, caused uh, this kind of movement. Uh, and this led me to uh, consider the cultural issue because my thinking was that without a significant loss of loyalty to the existing situation in Ethiopia, uh, loyalty to its uh, 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 inherited values uh, and institutions, one would not be tempted to engage uh, in this kind of radical pass. So for me, radicalization was connected with some kind of cultural alienation. That is, the youth, the educated youth, had lost commitment to the Ethiopian identity, to Ethiopian values, 
uh, as they were passed on uh, from uh, previous uh, generations. So this was an assumption and I had of course to see uh, where it can go. And uh, the very question, uh, this very question, I mean, led me to reflect on the educational system in Ethiopia. It's therefore when I started to reflect on this educational system that I saw the link between uh, the cultural and uh, revolutionary attitude uh, of the youth. So in its basic aspect, as I was studying uh, the educational system, one characteristics emerge, uh, which is the uprooting character of the educational system. The attempt was to introduce into Ethiopia, and it was introduced actually, this was more than an attempt actually, it was a, uh, something yeah. they realized, was to bring into Ethiopia a system of education that was designed for European uh, countries. The teachers came from Europe, uh, the textbook came from Europe, the curriculum was copied from Europe, uh, Europe or America, whatever, it's the same thing, from the West. Yeah. Western. Western. And uh, since I, I myself had to pass through this kind of education, uh, I could very well, uh, recalling, let's say, my memory that we could talk for hours about history in class, and uh, Ethiopia was uh, never mentioned. Uh, so that uh, it became so marginalized in our thinking uh, that progressively uh, uh, we became quite critical about the heritage uh, that we had, let's say, received from the past which was presented in glorious terms, of course, by our parents and by the government. Uh, but uh, you would go to class and expect that somebody would, uh, would talk about Ethiopia, but it's never mentioned. Mm -hmm. So what we were learning actually is, let's say, to a kind of depreciation of our culture, which is therefore also a self-depreciation. And uh, it could not, it did not require, let's say, any kind of further thinking to realize that uh, this was, uh, let's say, uh, a breeding ground for critical mind and hence for radicalization. Now, radicalization of course was also very facilitated by the fact that at that time, uh, that is uh, 60s, uh, 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 early 60s, late 60s, and even early 70s, uh, Marxism-Leninism was actually the dominant ideology in the world. Uh, thanks, of course, to the rise of uh, the Soviet Union and also to China. Uh, when you go to 
Western universities, uh, you find there are four people uh, already radicalized, and the professors also were radicalized. But for them, I mean, uh, they were trying to improve on their conditions. Uh, but for us, uh, we uh, uh, gather from this uh, this idea that all our features that we have received were actually obstacles to further uh, development. And they, were, they became synonymous with backwardness, retardation, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. Yeah. So, so that when we, uh, after this kind of shock that you receive, uh, so when you try to reconstitute yourself, your thinking, then you encounter Marxism-Leninism because it was uh, all over. Uh, uh, it had become a dominant ideology. It was the fashion, actually, in the West uh, to become Marxist-Leninist. Uh, 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 uh. And uh, the very characteristic that this, this is the thing that also which must be noted is the uh, Eurocentric uh, orientation of the education. Uh, that is, uh, we'll see that uh, in the traditional system, I mean, uh, 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 what, what we learn from uh, uh, our father and uh, uh, from, let's say, uh, traditional intellectuals was that uh, uh, the sun, rise and sets in Ethiopia. That was our uh, yeah. uh, 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 we were the center uh, of the As it should have been, yeah. Of the world. But when you go to the West, you become a periphery outside uh, the realm where things are decided, where things were invented, we didn't invent anything. Mm -hmm. I thought that. Uh, I mean, we, we, we suspected or we came to the conclusion that we were not told the truth about our country. So this, this Eurocentric, that is the fact that everything comes from Europe, uh, the curriculum, the context, the textbook, the professor, and, 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 uh, that all this is uh, delivered, uh, uh, let's say, by uh, a foreign language, you know, either English or French or Italian, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, we were completely dissented, lost. So when, when, when somebody is, is lost, you, you, you want to catch something that can save you. So for us, that we thought that Marxism was precisely that uh, thing that can reconstitute uh, uh, our, our thinking. So we became very critical. And this criticism, we must not, I mean, uh, criticism is something positive, but when it is associated with self-depreciation, uh, then it becomes destructive. Uh, uh, it's not really something positive, constructive. So that, that was not more of, let's look at what's going on around us and let's see where we can fix it. It was more like everything that's going on around us is inferior. So let's yeah. just destroy We're, it. Get rid of it. That was, yeah. get rid of it. Uh, mm. Throw it away. Uh, yeah. That's precisely radicalism. That's revolution. Yeah. Uh, there's no continuity with the past. Uh, you uh, detach yourself from the past. You cut the link uh, with the past. And you start from zero. You reconstruct that society again, starting with institutions and belief and everything. Uh, because the whatever was uh, uh, received from the past uh, was characterized as retarded, backward, uh, reactionary, uh, and all, all the terms that, that were used at that time. Yeah. 
the so other, uh, okay, good. I was gonna say, so the fact that all kinds of traditions were taken out of what, what we're calling now modern education kind of caused the students yeah. to lose their center, to lose their identity in that yeah, sense. To lose their identity, mm -hmm. their, their attachment, their commitment to uh, precisely. Because uh, even if the uh, uh, English teacher, the French teacher did not directly criticize uh, Ethiopian tradition, Ethiopian culture, the implication was there. Yeah. Because we were not mentioned, we we're peripherized. So one would deduce that we are nowhere, we have done nothing. Huh? Huh? We are relevant. We, yeah. know, we are totally relevant. Yeah. Uh, the other factor, which is also important that I would like to mention, is the impact of repression. Uh, of course, uh, we know that the imperial regime uh, was. Uh, uh, in repressive in the sense that uh, it did not allow uh, uh, open debate uh, about alternative uh, solutions. Uh, it did not allow uh, the free uh, uh, exercise, let's say, of uh, free speech. Uh, the formation of free par parties in general. And the uh, impact of this was that the issue, how to reform Ethiopia, how to modernize it, never became an issue of public debate as such because of its political implications. Because you cannot, uh, let's say, talk about uh, modernizing Ethiopia, solving uh, its problem without, of course, um, uh, engaging in some kind of criticism uh, as regards the political system. Uh, and this was not uh, allowed. So as a result, the real debate uh, about this alternative solutions uh, went into what I call, let's say, uh, underground reality. Because it, it was not openly discussed, so it yes. was hidden. And in this hidden group that were discussing uh, 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 how to change things, uh, underground groups were formed that became very important. These underground groups were, of course, very radicalized already. Uh, for, for, for example, one mentioned uh, the group known as Crocodile Group at the Disaba University, uh, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, very, very influential. Uh, and, you know, it went into this mentality of conspiration, uh, 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 violent opposition, this, this language that excludes others, because that's how you survive in an a, a underground, let's say, uh, uh, environment. Uh, uh, so that the open debate, the political debate as an open issue uh, was totally discarded. Uh, uh, and this was very, very detrimental because there was no any confrontation in this case. Uh, 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 so you join one group and then you follow that group and everything is done in such a way that uh, you uh, are cut off from any other group. Yeah. You is it because you cannot talk about the fact that you're in this group and uh, yeah, dialogue was not allowed? Yeah, okay. yeah, and this uh, will lead you to develop some kind, let's say, of complete devotion. You become fanatic of the, the, that group. and. Uh, uh, then, of course, you, you become unable to uh, get out of that group. You become uh, critical towards it, even if you, it make, even if you, it makes mistakes. Uh, now, as the one 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 outcome of this is the fact that the student movement uh, fell under the influence of radical groups, and that the moderate. Moderation was actually became, became impossible. Uh, moderate leaders were completely discarded. Uh, the student uh, uh, here, I think, I, 
uh, there were there were times where uh, moderates were elected at the university. For example, as a president, for example, uh, I can't cite the name of Mokonin Bishaw, who was uh, became president, uh, was elected. It was an attempt by some uh, by the student, let's say, to uh, 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 find some middle ground or middle way uh, toward, let's say, or this radical group. Uh, 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 it didn't succeed because this this moderate group obtained absolutely nothing from the regime, and they lost their influence, progress, and they were told, "Look, uh, moderation is not the solution. Revolution is the solution." Wait, this is, but that's that's exactly uh, what has happened. Uh, I will also mention, in, as, as one factor, the uh, uh, ethnic uh, uh, discontent uh, because of the lack of uh, land reforms, uh, uh, Tennessee. Uh. So w once once you are confronted with ethnic issues, then uh, you become vulnerable to uh, Leninist argument, according to which. Uh, only uh, socialism can solve the national question. Yeah. This cannot be done in a liberal uh, uh, system uh, uh, or in, a, in, a, uh, in the system that we call, let's say, about through reforms. It requires a radical uh, change. And that uh, if you want to solve, reinstate Ethiopian unity, uh, uh, under, let's say, an acceptable arrangement, a lasting arrangement, then uh, uh, the Lenin solution for uh, national questions, that is, uh, 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 the uh, uh, this even uh, accepting uh, cessation, up to cessation, actually, accept mm -hmm. of some group if uh, they uh, uh, do, not, do not want to become member of the, the association or the nation, uh, they could, but also uh, 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 the fact is that this is one way of establishing equality between ethnic groups, not the only way, establishing ethnic groups. Uh, 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 and that's the, the reasoning was, if uh, everybody is equal, then uh, uh, any attempt to secede uh, stops. Mm -hmm. So this is the ideal solution. And mm -hmm. uh, student were. Uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, receptive of this of this argument. Yeah, I think from my understanding is that the minute you remove someone from their own um, identity and their own indigenous knowledges, as we've done when we're talking about modern education, everything else that comes from it is going to be toxic because one, we're starting from a place of what is ours is inferior. What we mm. know of our parents, our history is irrelevant to in the world um, stage. So we don't matter in a sense. So whatever solutions that we're going to come up with, they're not going to be homegrown. We have to import it from somewhere else because there's something better out there that's not us. Yeah, de de definitely. Uh, for example, I uh, uh, I was taught uh, uh, until uh, secondary grade uh, in this uh, in the school known as Lise Gavramariam. So I had French education uh, and. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, ha we had, I mean, classes, Ethiopia, uh, language classes, Amharic were, were taught uh, Amharic, but also uh, Ethiopian history. And the person who was teaching us, to, teaching us uh, these two subjects was a French citizen. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is, this is how it was done. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't uh, I mean, uh, the, the professor was very interested in Ethiopia, but but uh, uh, it's odd. I mean, in the sense it's that very uh, odd, yeah. uh, 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 which means that uh, even 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 we cannot get somebody from Ethiopia to teach us Amharic, uh, then where are you? Yeah. Mm. That's true, yeah. So what was the educational system like in Ethiopia before Western education um, came to be the standard? Yeah, the, the point is that uh, I, I think uh, uh, a number of uh, books uh, are written on these issues is that the main characteristics of uh, this uh, system of education was 
uh, it's it's uh, etio centric character. Mm. That was it. Uh, as I said, Ethiopia was really the center. Huh? So, what happened with that? The 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 content of the education was uh, basically uh, 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 the religious belief. Uh, 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 um, uh, practice and values uh, of Ethiopia in general, what you call uh, uh, Ethiopia, but it has it had also a socio-political uh, component, um, uh, uh, and that one of its uh, of its aspect was that uh, it perfectly connected the two. That is the the secular and the mm. spiritual. Uh, so that it was uh, a whole, you know, uh, it responded to uh, many questions. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the, w what we have to see is uh, uh, also there, uh, because we, uh, we, I need to come back to some, some issue. Uh, 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 just the case of Ethiopia, why in Africa, Mm. Uh, uh, I, uh, let's say uh, Ethiopia, let's say, engage in this kind of uh, uh, radical revolution uh, compared, let's say, to other countries. Of course, uh, socialism uh, uh, was the fashion at that time, uh, and many African countries claim to be socialist, but uh, it was more uh, of African socialism than really the, the genuine implementation of. Uh, uh, Marxism, uh, uh, Leninism, in Europe. Yeah, we wanted that. We wanted to really implement uh, uh, the theory. So, uh, if you ask me that, uh, 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 that is the case of Ethiopia was unique. Uh, the intensity, actually, the intensity of radical or the radicalization was also unique. Maybe with the exception of the Iranian students, they, 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 they were quite, quite, quite very radicalized. Uh, the point is that. Uh, the existence in Ethiopia of uh, a landed aristocracy mm. and an imperial regime, uh, exactly as it is, uh, lend itself perfectly to uh, uh, class analysis. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's what we call usually feudalism, uh, uh, a mixture of capitalism uh, and uh, feudalism and then it's naturally invited uh, this uh, this approach or this class uh, struggle approach uh, and we thought that of all the theories that we had uh, mm -hmm. that which explains most or better the existing situation was precisely uh, this issue of class struggle that is uh, peasantry, let's say, dominated by landed aristocracy. Huh? Uh, and this also, uh, let's say, we, uh, let's say, uh, drove us, let's say, to establish a parallel with Russia. Uh, wow. because, uh, mm. we had, yeah, we had a similar, you know, uh, even in terms of religion, huh? Huh? there was some similarity, but in terms of so, uh, social structure, social economic formation, we have similarity. Therefore, uh, uh, we said to ourselves, that if uh, the solution, the Russian solution, the Soviet solution more exactly, uh, has succeeded, why not in Ethiopia? <laughs> huh? that, that's it. Uh, it, was, it was easy uh, to uh, enter into this kind of justification, saying that, mm. look, uh, uh, Ethiopia had uh, Ethiopia and Russia had uh, the same so so uh, political mm. structure. Uh, look where now Russia is, because it has uh, implemented Marxism solutionism. Therefore, for mm. us, this is the okay. solution. Mm. So, in effect, even though we were never really officially colonized, we yeah that another. We, point. Yeah, yeah, we kind of imported all the problems that other colonized um, countries are facing. Yeah. 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 The, the fact that we were not colonized when I was, I was another factor of uniqueness. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, because, you see, uh, I remember, I mean, we were very close with an African student in France, for example, where I have done my study there. Uh, uh, for, for them, the main issue was decolonization. 
Yeah. So that is uh, some were still struggling to the, to uh, to get their freedom. Others were uh, free, but uh, not yet decolonized. Huh? So for them, uh, uh, the the whole the, the the political issue was framed in terms of decolonization. For us, this mm-hmm. did not apply. Huh? Yeah. So for us, the problem was internal, which means it is about class struggle. Yeah. Huh? Nothing else. Huh? That was uh, uh, one also of the temptation that, that, that led us to this kind, let's say, of uh, rapprochement uh, with, with Russia. Huh? Uh, and uh, uh, the fact that we're not colonized, huh? uh, for, uh, it really says, why are we retarded? Uh, why mm-hmm. can't we advance? Why are you b- backward? Then mm-hmm. the problem must be internal. Yeah. It's this landed aristocracy, uh, mm-hmm. which is the main obstacle to change. Uh, so we went there. Now, another uh, people, and this is, I think, uh, it has not been noted by other authors, So, but uh, for me, it is actually one of the most important factors. It is the notion that Ethiopians have of the state. You see, one must refer to Ethiopian history, that is to its survival uh, in a very hostile environment, uh, especially uh, the threat from uh, Muslim countries uh, was always perceived by uh, uh, Ethiopians, let's say, as a real threat. Uh, it happened even with grind almost uh, yeah. they become successful. The strain. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh out of this the Ethiopian this this is the thing, they they invented yeah. a, a story that they, that they internalized uh, and made it part of their culture. Uh, and this this idea that the state uh, does not have only a secular role, it has also a religious role, which is to protect Christian Ethiopia uh, against, uh, let's say, all the uh, threat or the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the environment. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this led, uh, uh, let's say, to this definition of the emperor as... Uh, the elect of God, which is precisely in the Kabranagast. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, the main role of the emperor is to protect the church. Mm. As a result of this, the state had a, a very spiritual mission. Uh, 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 let's say I call it a, a, a messianic role. Uh, mm-hmm. to see to it that Christian Ethiopia survive at all costs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is It is yeah. definitely, like, I think the more yeah, yeah. we so, understand, uh, yeah. This is a cultural bent, uh, uh, which is characteristic, say, of, uh, let's say, of, uh, uh, of the uh, Amara and uh, Tigrayan students at that time. Uh, and uh, uh, this culture had been therefore wanted its own expression, and it was easy to pass from religious messian- messianism to social messianism. That is, uh, this attempt that the socialist state bring freedom, equality, prosperity, uh, and that will get rid uh, of all kind of problems. So we get were actually receptive to the Marxist message of social utopia. It fit perfectly well uh, yeah. in our conception uh, of the state. Mm. It is an agent. It's not simply something secular. It's not simply law and order. It has other functions, which is precisely to make real uh, what was previously religious. Yeah. But now become became let's say social social Ethiopia was therefore very easy for for Ethiopians. I mean the the the, the adoption uh, of this uh, 
uh, social. God's favor uh, then means also that you have this bent and this bent leads you precisely to uh, say, uh, there is more to it than simply uh, law uh, and order. Uh, we still uh, we still find this this this, this uh, sense uh, with uh, 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 even now even now for example many many uh, when we talk when Ethiopians discuss about the current issue uh, 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 the the expectation is that everything must come from the state. Yeah. Yeah, we're always talking about what what should the government do this and that and you know how they're going to solve this problem as if like we're completely removed from the system of government but we want to comment everything about how it should be run. So that's Definitely. that's an interesting connection. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so that about the traditional culture sorry for uh, the traditional education. The other mm -hmm. important thing uh, is the issue of language. I mean uh, I don't know if you are aware of this, but I, at one point uh, uh, during the uh, 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 Dirk's time in Ethiopia, uh, uh, we were, of course, teaching philosophy, but uh, were uh, uh, compelled, I mean, required to teach Marxist uh, Leninist philosophy. That was uh, the assignment. Yeah. Uh, 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 and at one point, I said, I saw, I saw that is, you cannot center yourself. Uh, unless you use you 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 use and learn uh, with your own language, with your native language, that's not possible because the fact that you speak English or French that disenter you totally. Uh, you you become let's say uh, that that student who is speaking another foreign language. Mm -hmm. So you can't express yourself in your own language. You can't use that. Uh, uh, knowledge also in your own language. Huh? So therefore, language is not just simply an expression. It's also, it, uh, it carries all kinds, let's say, uh, of uh, uh, additional element uh, that, they say, uh, gives you uh, all the element by which you further alienate yourself uh, uh, from, uh, let's say, your tradition. So uh, I, 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 I attempted to, to uh, to teach in Amharic, uh, uh, the introductory course. Uh, um, uh, it was titled Introduction to Marxism, Leninism, uh, Philosophy. Uh, I had to battle with so many, so many uh, people. Yeah. Uh, the whole university, anti, with uh, some exception, uh, uh, were against uh, the experiment. It was just an experiment. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I I prepared handouts, uh, so many things for, for in Amharic to uh, deliver uh, this course, let's say, in this uh, Amharic language. Uh, so the, also uh, add to this the, uh, the ethnic uh, problems, uh, Oromos were not, uh, uh, let's say, um, happy that uh, Amharic was elevated to the degree of an academic language. Uh, uh, it is good for uh, you know uh, for uh, let's say uh, bureaucratic matters, but academic <laughs> that's, that's too much uh, let's say influence uh, 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 and uh, they were against it. That that I understand, but what I don't understand that Tigrayans and uh, Amara uh, professors also were entirely completely opposed to that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, I fought for, 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 for one semester. We, we obtained some result, uh, uh, but uh, I could not pursue. I was actually uh, uh, the president and everybody intervened, so I could not uh, continue. I had to stop it. Yeah. Huh? That's right, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, 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 this is the thing, but... Uh, uh, now, even then, I mean, I was convinced that uh, if you really want to change the way we think, uh, if you want, let's say, to uh, ground in Ethiopia our knowledge, then the one thing to do it is the use of Ethiopian language. That was the one thing. Uh, it, as I said, it's the, the traditional system united, you know, the social aspect and the political aspect. Uh, I mean, it had... Uh, three levels. Uh, we can, they were called uh, 
Zayma Beit, you know, Kini Beit, and uh, Masaf Beit. Uh, 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 the last one, therefore, was where really uh, serious studies were conducted. Uh, uh, it is in this in this stage that you the level, the last level, that you study the uh, uh, Tarika Nagas, the Kubra Nagas, the Vata Nagas. Uh, so you see the or how how the social uh, and the religious are united here. Uh, that is. Mm -hmm. Kibra Negus talk about uh, 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 about the spiritual uh, Ethiopia's God, the, the, the uh, Ethiopia as God's favored nation, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, the Fatanagas and the Tarikanagas, therefore, are based on this religious speak, the uh, secular base, the historical base, and the social base. So uh, there was a really beautiful unity uh, between the two. Uh, uh, of course, of course, the mm. the uh, it had some severe shortage uh, weaknesses in the traditional education. Uh, we can cite the case; it was not uh, it was completely unscientific. I mean, it did, uh, it did not uh, include any uh, scientific matter. Uh, 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 some spoke of uh, it being totally uncritical. Uh, that is just. You just read, you learn, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but there was no any encouragement uh, to develop uh, uh, other views. Uh, and they said the method also was not good because uh, essentially based on memorizing. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So it did not encourage creativity, did not encourage, let's say, critical mind, uh, so and so. So I think uh, we, can, we can say that it was correct, but the decision to throw away instead of reforming it, uh, was precisely the bad one. Yeah. yeah. I think we could have done a lot with using what was currently available and building on top of it. But um, that's definitely an interesting experiment if we were to do it now. Uh, for those, those of you that are just joining us, we're having a conversation with Professor Masai Kapede. Um, please go ahead and share and subscribe and like this conversation. And we'll be right back after a quick break. Do your parents watch Adabawai Media? Watch, follow, subscribe, and help Adabawai. Adabawai Media, Logan Tengina, Jarwan Yasata. Welcome back, everyone. If you're just joining us, we're talking about cultural dislocation in Ethiopia, specifically that um, the one caused by the educational system or the Western imported educational system that we have. I'm having a conversation with Professor Masai Kapede, um, and we're just going to pick up our conversation um, from there. So um, if is the professor is here? Absolutely. Okay. So you argue that um, the educational system in Ethiopia and also in Africa, as we know, it's um, today has expanded the colonial ideas and also favors dict dictatorial regimes. So what is the connection between education um, we have now and how that supports uh, dictators in, in Africa and Ethiopia as well? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh... What is interesting here is that uh, uh, when you speak, let's say, of uh, of uh, modernization, uh, how was, in general, uh, 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 scholar uh, politicians, now, uh, how did uh, they conceive uh, modernization? And how they intended to achieve uh, what means uh, they will use to uh, 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 achieve modernization. It is always, uh, uh, it has never been uh, posed in terms of social movement uh, that is starting from a local process growing as it did uh, in, in Europe. Uh, in Europe, there is no any, any plan to modernize. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that is, uh, uh, people were uh, following their interests, uh, there were inventions, uh, there were class movement, all this progressively led to the fact that uh, we uh, uh, achieved, uh, let's say, a certain uh, 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 certain characteristics in Europe that uh, I was later on termed as modernity or uh, modernization. So therefore, mm -hmm. it was not a planned process. Mm -hmm. Now, with the colonization, with, with colonization, uh, the idea became that well, since Africans are so uh, backward and retarded that by themselves they can never get. Uh, mm -hmm this modernization process, then uh, modernization should be introduced uh, from above. That is, uh, we have to impose it uh, on people uh, so that they get rid of all those backward feeling, backward sentiment uh, uh, that prevents modernization. Like uh, uh, even uh, some speak of uh, uh, thinking, let's say, in terms of uh, religion that is more based on magic than anything else, uh, so that mm -hmm. ra rationalization was not uh, actually a characteristic that African could develop by themselves. So uh, it must be externally induced. It must come from outside and imposed. So that's the, the, the scheme uh, that was uh, adopted. And Africans, uh, 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 politicians as well as scholars, uh, completely adopted this model. Yeah. Now, the point is that with Western education, there emerged uh, an elite or a class, whatever we call it, uh, or a group, a social group, uh, that claims to be educated. Uh, in the Western sense of the word, educated, uh, <laughs> order. Uh, well, uh, also, uh, the, the association between Western and modern, of course, that is also uh, another problem. But uh, the, uh, uh, so they said, since the colonizer could not do it, uh, once it, African countries are decolonized, then the African elite should do it by precisely imposing modernization on their own people because there is nothing to expect. Huh? Now, these are, that is, it's the same colonial model that was yeah. adopted. Huh? The, and Just the different leaders, yeah. The colonizers were, in this case, uh, uh, let's say, native people. Huh? Uh, who had received Western education and who had assumed uh, that they had a civilizing mission, like colonizers assumed. Uh, that they so uh, they are the tutors, and the people are the tutees. That is, they are t uh, treated as children, will tell you what you must do, uh, what is modernism, what is good, what is evil, uh, uh, and that this is how we are going to modernize our country. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do that, when you assume this task of civilizing, uh, then of course, you claim or you require absolute power because the people mm -hmm. have no say in the modernization process. For example, look at what happens in Ethiopia. Uh, uh, we have, that is, we had a model, uh, the Soviet, the Chinese model. Mm -hmm. uh, what was done there was perfectly legitimate according to us, uh, was appropriate for Ethiopia. And we applied that. Not one day, not one moment, the people were asked whether uh, they uh, understand this, even whether they agree with this. No. They say, we are going to nationalize land because it was done in Russia, because it was done there. We rationalized. Uh, we are going to constitute committees. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. well, so and so. Uh, that was also done. The people 
Yeah. You say this is the okay. kind of modernization yeah. that you are engaged in. That and unsurprisingly, it fails. Because mm -hmm. it's the same dis disregard to the people that yeah. the colonial master had, yeah. Because unless you are with the people. Yeah. And that the people are really the force that drives you, then you will not succeed. You you will remain this this periphery uh, and adjacent to Western economies, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the, the 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 with your absolute power, then uh, you uh, you can't accept democracy. You can't accept anything because democracy would mean that the people would have would have a say. That's why democracy fails enough because we have this civilizing mission in our head uh, that mm -hmm. we are the most educated. Uh, yeah. So we have a mission now, uh, which is the mission to uh, modernize our country by all means. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, even against the wish of the people, uh, and we have to do it. Yeah. Uh, use therefore violent means, uh, yeah. but, and this is why it leads always to dictatorship. It is the conception which is derived from this assumption of a civilizing mission. Uh, that's yeah. the, the, the link uh, between yeah. between the two. Because it, in a sense, it starts from that devaluation of our own traditions and culture to begin yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. So the 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 the, the what we must keep in mind the the fundamental scheme of Western education uh, of the West uh, of the Eurocentric, let's say, uh, vision, which is that uh, it was uh, coined by uh, the German philosopher Hegel. I think he he gave it its its, its final form. Huh? Mm. Uh, which is this notion of world history. Uh, there is such a thing as world history. And uh, all societies uh, uh, have the same goal. They are going towards the same goal. However, because they have developed, some of them have developed certain features, uh, uh, mm. they represent stages which are, let's say, uh, 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 frozen. Uh, they can't move anymore. They can't follow. So that's how colonization was justified. Mm -hmm. the, so instead of each society following its own history uh, in mm -hmm. a parallel way, now we, have, we are in the same time, in the same history, uh, what is called this unilinear conception of history. Yeah. And that each country, let's say now, uh, you ca can be classified as advanced, retarded, primitive, etc. within this scheme. Yeah. And the uh, thing is that Europe represents the most advanced part of this, uh, and therefore it is the model, the prototype for the society. Our future is not with us, it is Europe. Yeah, it's to look yeah. like them. Yeah, and this yeah. develop, let's say, this mentality, which is to imitate the West. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 imitativeness, which is which is from the fact that it's already done. Uh, we have just to follow. So we have simply to catch up. Yeah. We don't invent our modernity. We are not allowed. We have simply to catch up the West. Yeah. Uh, and this is so this led to the identification of Western education with modernity. Yeah. Because you become modern uh, when you are westernized. Mm -hmm. And the, the end will be that, uh, let's say, we'll all will be simply uh, 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 black, but uh, Western yeah. as in our mentality and culture. And they say this is the end of history. We have reached the end of history. Mm -hmm. So we have to deconstruct this by precisely claiming that no, we live in our own time. We have our own history. Mm -hmm. So we have to argue for the notion of multiple modernities, not just one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Each country, each culture has its own modernity, or should have its own modernity, pursue it huh? on the basis, let's say, of its own movement, its own dynamics, its own culture, huh? its own aspirations, 
that's what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to get there. Okay. Yeah. If we can stay on this topic for a second, uh, mm -hmm. when we're talking about the elites, I think it's mm -hmm. such a, a broad topic that we talk about in Ethiopia, especially we, the idea of like branding someone that is educated as elites and out of touch. Um, at the same time, though, telling people you should go get education so you can come back help. And then when they come back to help, we say, no, they're elites. They don't fit here anymore. So what is the balance between the two? And who do we really consider an elite or and also at the same time, are we not supposed to um, want these educated people to come and help out and show us their ideas of living? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, the term elite, it's a French term, uh, of course, which means uh, select, uh, superior, the best uh, yeah. of, of a society. So it could be, uh, it could be education, it could be wealth. Uh, uh, but they are supposed to be uh, the best part uh, of that uh, society. Now, it has definitely a very uh, negative connotation, whether we like it or not. Uh, uh, because, I mean, the issue is not that these people are educated or Western educated. I mean, that's not the, uh, the main problem, that they are educated is fine. But it is the use they make uh, of that education, uh, which is therefore here uh, criticized. Uh, so when you uh, emerge like this and that adopt a different mentality, uh, when you adopt this colonized mentality, then uh, you uh, have no uh, tolerance for what is simply native, uh, what is simply uh, popular, so you adopt, let's say, uh, an attitude of arrogance. Uh, you, uh, you become uh, patronizing. Uh, all these things, therefore, uh, is what you have mentioned uh, uh, previously. Uh, leads to the fact that you require, uh, you, you see yourself as uh, privileged people. Uh, uh, and that is not, let's say, in line uh, with uh, what is expected from an educated person. So uh, 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 I think uh, uh, unless we uh, come back to our traditions uh, in, a, in some way, come back, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying this to, to uh, 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 honor the past. I mean, that, that cannot be done. Uh, I, I, I'm saying recovering the spirit uh, of, that, uh, of that time, uh, we uh, uh, center our, our, uh, our education uh, I think we will be talking, uh, behaving differently uh, uh, than what we call now simply uh, the uh, elite. Uh, it's a contrast. Uh, uh, that is, elite means that there is the best part of what is best in that society. And it should not uh, be characterized in this way. What does it mean best? Yeah. Because fr from best you go, therefore, to entitlement. Huh? So you demand the form, and they say more power, more wealth, more privilege, huh? uh, and this is uh, wh where we are. Yeah. Um, so is there a way for us to trace this the ethnic issues that we're having right now uh, to today? And in a sense, so what gave birth to the ethnic movement that we see today? Oh, oh uh, I, I, I personally, of course, uh, I mean, we have to distinguish uh, yeah. uh, here uh, uh, that uh, uh, ethnic discontent exists and that this ethnic discontent uh, were perfectly legitimate, uh, legitimate uh, actually, uh, that should not be an issue. Uh, where we have issue is with, uh, let's say, nationalism, ethno-nationalism, especially. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that is really the, uh, uh, the development that we have witnessed in Ethiopia. From ethnic discontent, we went to uh, the idea of uh, uh, ethno-nationalism. Uh, and now we have region uh, uh, that, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, uh, claim to be nations. I don't know mm -hmm. the ground, uh, but uh, they claim to be nations. So, I mean, uh, the one thing that I notice uh, uh, that and when you uh, uh, once you are familiar with 
uh, this movement known as uh, Marxist-Leninist movement, uh, student movement, polarized movement, uh, uh, then uh, you, uh, first of all, acquire uh, this uh, uh, belief that, as we said, liberalism cannot solve this problem. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. As it cannot solve class struggle, uh, mm -hmm. it cannot also solve uh, 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 ethnic uh, uh, conflicts. So only the Soviet model can do that. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, the, the, this 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 is the, the, the really the, the mm -hmm. powerful force. Second, from Marxism-Leninism, you learn you learn a form of thinking which is to polarize social conflict. Mm -hmm. That is you see them as opposites, just as class struggle. For example, I mean, even the concept of class struggle was a construct in the sense that uh, class, which had many interaction uh, and also many layers, uh, mm -hmm. now taken together and polarized and distinguished and polarized so that they become enemies. There is no any middle ground. There is no any possibility uh, to find a common cause. Because they don't have a common cause. That was the uh, very message. They don't, there is no common cause. Mm -hmm. So polarization, this, 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 uh, this, uh, 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 let's say, bent, this mental bent, which is polarization. Uh, once you get it from class struggle, then ethnic groups also appear to you as totally polarized, mm -hmm. so that you think them as precisely nations. Mm -hmm. And once you have nation within a nation, then this is simply political fragmentation uh, mm -hmm. and you will not be able to reconstitute the unity of the, of, of the country. So that's, that's uh, we, we, we uh, still, uh, still now, uh, we're, we're, we're the, 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 this, this effort uh, to find the common cause, that does not exist in Ethiopia. I don't find it. I don't see it. It's all about opposition. And I think this is uh, this is the way from, we have inherited this from the 60s, that is this way of polarizing social conflict. It has become a kind of habit, uh, and it's very difficult to get rid of it. So uh, we are now paying the price, even even the same conditions that are that have been totally changed. Yeah, and even this idea of seeming like there's only one solution to any problem any society might that might face within Ethiopia. And it's really fascinating to see everyone being so polarized because they think their idea is the only idea that would work. Yeah. Not even wanting to compromise or not even to say, you know what, let's try your idea today. And then if right. it doesn't work out, we'll try something else. Definitely, definitely, definitely. You, you become enemies, polarization. Mm -hmm. huh? Huh? Uh, uh, entail this fact that you see the other as the enemy, mm -hmm. uh, somebody that you have to destroy. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to compromise. So this is where we are now. Yeah. So I think I think we did a good job. You did a good job at uh, giving us the basis to some of our problems that we're facing today and the history where um, those came to be. And maybe if we can move on to offering up some solutions. Um, you argue that, if I could quote you here, the revival of traditions and a specific sense of ensuring the emancipation of the study of Ethiopian history and culture from a Eurocentric concept is a most urgent and primal task. Yeah. So how do you see this emancipation uh, to look like practic practically, and how do we unpack this theory? Yeah, I mean, certain thing must be done huh, uh, to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, recenter Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, but uh, the, what, the, mo the, the most important thing that you can do, uh, let's say, is political. That is, uh, we must come to some kind of agreement about uh, Ethiopian history, Ethiopian culture. Uh, and this is an issue of political will. Huh? Uh, unless we agree uh, uh, how uh, 
uh, how we understand Ethiopian history, uh, it is very difficult to have a national education. You know, that is to give, let's say, something uh, that is common to uh, all students. And this is the most uh, difficult part. Uh, the other thing is that, of course, we can also uh, 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 make this effort uh, of thinking in terms of uh, 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 Ethiopia, uh, that is, uh, in our curriculum, uh, when we design curriculum, when, uh, uh, let's say, we teach, when you write books, uh, yeah. we can attempt, let's say, to uh, view and uh, understand Ethiopia as really our center uh, and work around that. Uh, but we are not doing it. I mean, we, we still are uh, foreign-oriented. Uh, I mean, we, we foreign-looking, because whatever we, we see, of, which, are, which are some value, it, it comes from the West. Uh, I mean, even when Ethiopian uh, uh, a foreigner writes a book, uh, most, of, most of these books, they say, are taken from Ethiopians, uh, 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 but nobody pay attention to what's going on in Ethiopia, especially in terms of uh, 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 academy. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can do uh, uh, several things. We can think about also language policy. Uh, that's uh, uh, very important, uh, uh, really. Uh, uh, la language is very important. It's not just an instrument. It's, 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 more, it's, more, it's more than this. Now, uh, what is an obstacle? Yeah. A major obstacle, I see, is that with uh, uh, the sound ethnic fragmentation in Ethiopia, uh, there was some attempt, or I see some uh, uh, tendency to return to the past. Uh, that is, each ethnic group wants to discover its own language, its own culture, etc., uh, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But he, there is here uh, an illusion that is attached to it, which is that you think that you are really reviving the past. You are unearthing something. Uh, it cannot be done. The past is gone. I mean, those who speak, for example, of uh, uh, Oromo culture uh, or any other culture, if they think that they are reviving Oromo culture, they are totally mistaken. Huh? Those who are Oromo now today, those who want to revive, are changed people. Yeah, they can't can go back. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? You can't go back. The past is gone. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go back, the tragedy is that huh? uh, 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 you go back to the so-called conquest, many leagues, and so, and then you create this resentment, this anger again, huh? uh, which is on a, on, a, on a history which has been self-invented, huh? uh, uh, so that you cannot get get rid of this so-called past, huh? which simply poison your soul. Yeah. It is not true. It is not real, but it poisons you so. because you think that this this has happened at that time, and that mm -hmm. uh, you now feel it, uh, and that you uh, uh, you uh, insert this feeling into your your identity, uh, and became this angry person uh, who cannot talk seriously with anybody uh, uh, except his own ethnic group. I mean, we had all more friends. I mean, we, we can't talk to each other anymore. Because they are so angry. Mm -hmm. So this, this so-called return to the past is actually an invention. You invented, you are, you are already a changed person. So when you see the past, you change it through the eyes of the changed person. Mm -hmm. So it's not authentic, but you can do here something good, which is that, yes, invent it, but with a forward looking. Mm -hmm. That is, make it in such a way that it integrates into a pan Ethiopian identity yeah. or Ethiopian modernity. So the issue is not really to revive this order, the issue is to create 
invent. Let us dare to invent Ethiopia. Yeah. That is the only solution. Yeah. And also, I think, you know, that idea of bringing the past mistakes, whatever that may be, to define our future, as opposed to, like you said, yeah. Yes. Recreating something better is very um, backward. <laughs> like if that is, if there's anything backward, that's that's a definition of it. I think. Because all, all history is actually invention. That is, you reconnect. You, mm -hmm. That is, you are establishing to you are trying to establish a continuity between your past and your present. Because reference to the past, I said, is necessary in order to have some perspective huh, yeah. on the present and also to see the future. So let us do this work, but with the spirit of integration. But let us not uh, try to remain faithful to something that is gone. <laughs> so this is uh, uh, the, the, what really the, the main thing that we need to do. So in this case, uh, artists, uh, writers, all kinds, let's say, are very important uh, in generating, let's say, this integrative uh, pan-Ethiopian uh, uh, identity. That will be, uh, let's say, the work of everybody. Yeah. And also, the end is speaking to the work of everybody and to bring it down to the individual level so we don't leave assigning tasks for the others. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, how do we begin to heal this cultural crack you, you talk about and um, to, today? And how do I do that as an individual? Uh, I, well, I don't know. At, at one point, as an individual, I can I can be efficient. But if I try to create, because these are social things. I mean, the culture is very social. So, so it, it is about really creating social social uh, movement, mood. I will say mood. Huh? Uh, 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 of uh, where, where people they say, uh, of course, this is done through individuals, but it must be a collective effort. Uh, 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 one person by himself uh, can, uh, cannot do it. So my, my thinking would be in this case, for to uh, try to generate various different uh, social movement uh, uh, that with the express purpose uh, of reinventing our history. Uh, of rewriting it again. That that will be uh, yeah. what, what I will see. Yeah. So, what should we keep in mind as people in the diaspora that don't necessarily live in Ethiopia directly, and also our education and our even cultural acumen is more Western than Ethiopian, as much as we yeah. like to fight it. How do we? How do we keep in mind when we, what should we keep in mind when we participate in the political and social aspects of um, Ethiopia? Yeah, the, the issue of diaspora, of course, uh, as times goes by, I mean, the link with Ethiopia uh, now uh, uh, loses strengths, of course, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because you live here uh, or in America or in Europe. Uh, so whether you like it or not, therefore you think in terms of, let's say, of, uh, uh, where you are, uh, and that, uh, 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 but, but there is one thing. I mean, the the, the commitment of the diaspora to uh, Ethiopia is really very very remarkable, as, as we see. So, but the danger for me is always this attempt to project. You know, what is true for Europe, what is true for America, is not true uh, for Ethiopia. So, uh, uh, so we must be, we must not lose sight of Ethiopian realities. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that, uh, that that's that the thing, and that's uh, uh, if I want to project, uh, 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 let's say the the level uh, uh, of advancement of Ethiopian of uh, European countries to, uh, to 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 Ethiopia, then. Uh, uh, I, I would completely, uh, the product would be totally negative uh, because uh, if you are not, if it's not real, it's not real, it will not, uh, uh, it will not, it will not apply. So I think the, the best we can do is to try to reconnect with Ethiopia uh, uh, as much as possible, uh, 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 you know, through trips, through things, academia, for example, those uh, who teach here, who have some, 
could go to Ethiopia and work for some time and then come back. Uh, this this would be some way of uh, reconnecting uh, with Ethiopia. I think uh, this is what uh, what I would say. Uh, but uh, 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 but the, the commitment is really remarkable, and I uh, advise I mean everybody to continue to have this link with the native country you know, uh, uh, and try to help as much as possible. Absolutely. Um, I have this question for myself as well, as mm -hmm. someone that grew up um, here in America and went to high school and college and most of my education really comes from a very Western identity. So mm -hmm. I'm always looking for ways to, to find and connect with Ethiopia. So what is the center of that identity as Ethiopians? Um, for me or you know, for our viewers or so to start exploring history being definitely one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that is, I, I don't see you have any other choice than to try to reconnect by all means, start to mm -hmm. listen to Ethiopian music, uh, <laughs> uh, reading Ethiopian literature, mm -hmm. so and so, but all these things that is to really, the, the one thing, for example, that persists, I know it's Ethiopian food, that I see. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Exist, but uh, uh, as far as the, uh, the rest of food is culture, but as far as the rest of the culture is concerned, I don't see this kind of connection. So uh, it must be on your part as an individual. You can do that. That is, uh, connect, uh, uh, learn the language uh, and uh, re read the history and the literature. Uh, what what they are, what is appearing here and there, uh, 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 and I think uh, in this case. Uh, I, I, I don't believe that one should have simply one identity. I, I don't. I don't believe that. Now we can have yeah. multiple identities, uh, and that this is uh, actually good. Uh, uh, already, already we are multiple. I mean, uh, I'm this. I'm that. I'm a father. I'm uh, a philosopher. I'm this. I'm this. I mean, uh, I can continue. Uh, an African, uh, and ultimately, I'm a human being. Also, I cannot all these things, but. Uh, so uh, that's not the issue, but uh, the, 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 there must be on your part some kind of effort to to connect. Uh, when you grow up in Ethiopia, that's not a problem. You just grow up there. Yeah. You, uh, you absorb whatever exists around you. Mm. But <laughs> when that's no longer possible, therefore you have to make the effort to go there or uh, mm. other means. Uh, uh, to uh, let's say to feel it from inside because that the, that the point for example when European uh, writes about Ethiopia I always know that they don't feel the country from inside yeah uh, so that what they present could be interesting in some way uh, uh, but they don't get to the soul of of, 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 the, of the people uh, 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 so Ethiopians can do it but. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. but, but we have to get out of this polarization. That, that's also the, the one thing that is preventing us really from feeling the, 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 the country now. Yeah, absolutely. I think all of that does definitely help in in really understanding who we are. And I think the more we have, the more the diaspora is really awakened to the true identity of Ethiopia, the better we can help. Like, yeah. Because like you said, the diaspora is really amazingly well connected and we do care about Ethiopia and we do want to see better things, even though we may not agree what, what those better things are. But I think the more we get to know Ethiopia, the more we know the people and the more we understand it. Mostly really from literature, I do believe, because there's those cultural um, antidotes that we have in literature we may not find anywhere else. You know? yeah. That definitely does help us um, find our center as, as people first and foremost. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming and having this conversation with us and taking the time. Uh, if you have any last comments that you want to make, I'll um, I'll give you the floor back. Uh, yeah. yeah. My, my, my comment is that, you know, uh, uh, I wrote this book yeah. uh, to understand why uh, Ethiopia, which has been compared to Japan at one point, mm. or with those people, those countries that are the potential to, to modernize, why did we fail? That was my original question. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, the failure started with the imperial regime, of course. Mm -hmm. 
but the disaster occurred was, of course, uh, was the uh, Marxist uh, Leninist uh, interruption. So, what is it? What went wrong? Because we had the potential. Mm -hmm. Other African countries, I mean, they were colonized. But we can't, uh, uh, we don't have the same excuse. So that is one of uh, the attempts to say, uh, this, this question led me to reflect on the Ethiopian education, uh, its cultural effect, uh, so and so. So that's uh, why I, I, I wrote the book, especially when I saw Ethiopia, the Ethiopian army defeated uh, and the, uh, when the uh, uh, TPLF, uh, let's say, uh, came to power, that was for me, uh, let's say, the saddest moment in, in my life. Uh, uh, not that I was uh, in any way opposed to, to anybody, uh, but I, I saw the danger uh, coming. Most, mm. yeah, uh, uh, so uh, I said, uh, for the first time, Ethiopia can't uh, defend itself. Uh, mm. uh, uh, and uh, uh, where this would lead, how would it survive uh, from this again? Because the history of Ethiopia is a history of survival uh, from the very beginning. Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, the, the history is not closed, but yeah. uh, so it is an attempt to reflect on that. Uh, 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 maybe to see what is. What went wrong? I don't know whether uh, this has been uh, helpful, what, what we just said today. Huh? But yes, this, was my, has been. this was my intention. Yeah, and you, you definitely has driven your point home. When I, when I was reading this book, I think something that really made me question throughout the, the book was, where was my education coming from? And what was the basis of that education? And how do I really truly understand Ethiopia as as an identity itself, as a country, do I look down on it somehow without realizing it? Do I think I'm better without really realizing it? Are there other things that I'm internalizing because of the education, because of my education? Um, and it did definitely help me unpack a lot of those things that I didn't even pay attention before. So it was definitely um, a pleasure reading this book. And for those of you that haven't had a chance to look at it or read it, you will find it on Amazon and other bookstores. The title is um, Radicalism and Cultural Dislocation in Ethiopia, just like the title of uh, this conversation today. Um, I much thank you. And if there's any other places that we can find your work, uh, Professor, uh, go ahead and tell us. Oh, well, yeah, uh, uh, Amazon is the best, best uh, university libraries also yeah, uh, of, uh, of, of my book. Yeah. Uh, um, I have also this, uh, uh, the, this one also, uh, Ideology and uh, Elite Conflict, which is focused on uh, uh, the Dirk uh, and all the consequences. Yeah. Could you hold up the book so I could see it? A little app. <laughs> No. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, thank you for the interview. Uh, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, you, you, your question was, of course, uh, pertinent. So I know you have read the book and you have reflected on it. So uh, uh, again, uh, thank you so much for uh, this interview. Thank you for being here and everyone that joined us over on YouTube and Facebook. We really appreciate your time and please go ahead and share and like this conversation and also make sure that when we are reading about Ethiopia, when we are trying to understand who we are as people, let's be kind to each other and I accept, like our uh, speaker said, our guest said today, uh, different ideas of modernity, not just one. And let's be open to many solutions, not just one. And until next week, we'll see you. <laughs>